Public Affairs presentation by the Atlanta Association of Black Journalists. And now your host, Angela Robinson. Welcome to In Contact and part two of our very special holiday extravaganza as we continue to celebrate the beautiful and delicious artistry of food with Chef Juan. And guess what? Chef Juan Montier has done what I believe is so wonderful when we think about tradition and when we think about family. And that, this is what this show is also about, not just the great cooking, because he has made sure, and with love from his son, he's handed it down to this chef, Chef Austin Montier. Thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, it's so great to have father. you here. My fine son. Yes, yes. And I'm going to go on record right now, Austin. And you know, I remember you, don't you hate when people say, when you were just a little child? Oh, I go. know, I know, but bear, but bear with your Auntie Angie just for a minute. Because we talked before the show and we laughed together because Auntie Angie doesn't know how to cook. <laughs> and at 13, I wasn't thinking about it at all. You know what I'm saying? I do, I do. But I know you are grateful that your father handed this down. When did you first get this bug for cooking? So I am 13 and I've been cooking for 11 years. That means I started cooking when I was about two. About two. <laughs> it, it all started, I was, I'd always been interested, uh, just waddling around the kitchen. One day my dad just said, hey Austin, um, hop up here and you wanna sprinkle some salt. Started uh -huh. cooking, started sprinkling some seasonings. Next day he got me a stool and it was on. And it was on, and it was on, don't it you was love on. it? on. I don't know, and I can feel Mm, we all have having a little moment. <laughs> How much the, the love of what you do, the artistry, the beautiful thing about uh, Chef Juan is that he is really an architect by trade, an interior, a decorator, designer by trade, and he has infused all of those together for gourmet cooking and passed it down. He sketches out the food and then it comes to life. But there's a different kind of glow when you hear what your son has said, and it just started with sprinkle here, sprinkle there. It's mm. got to just make you it, mm, it, um, pop. It fills me with uh, it fills me with joy. Mm -hmm. Just to um, you know, not many fathers and sons have real quality yes. bonding time together. Yes, yes. And I'm not a big football guy, so yeah. the cooking is what works for us. Yeah. You know, I want to share something. I want you to come right up here with me. Um, because Austin wrote, was this an essay for school? It was sure. an essay, it was a um, self-memoir that we were supposed to do. It's called Lights, Camera, Cooking. It is a beautiful story. And I just wanna share a little bit, is that okay? Yes ma'am. While you get some things together here. He's, uh, Austin writes, I started cooking with my dad when I was about two years old. Go ahead, he start taught stripping. me and as my knowledge of cooking expanded, I too taught him. We taste each other's creations and critique them most of the time his being a little bit better. I added a little bit better. <laughs> Regardless, cooking with my dad has brought us closer together and given us a way to communicate through the arts. I realized that my relationship might not be as strong if I had never cooked together. Can I do one? We've got some pictures that we'll that be sharing time. of Austin, little guy, and cooking. But when you hear this, Austin, I got to tell you, it's not every 13-year-old, 12-year-old, whatever that would say, yep. that it really made a difference in your life. Yes, ma'am. It did? Yes, it did. It really did. It made a difference in my life, too. Yes, yes. We were, uh, I, I was um, on a consulting cooking thing in Bermuda, uh -huh. and uh, it was for a radio show, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, I was supposed to go down to the kitchen and start cooking for the 6 a.m. radio call. Right. And Austin was three, mm -hmm. and he wanted to come down. So we came down, and he was uh -huh. actually helping me cook in Bermuda. When most parents are saying, get out of the kitchen. Baby, get out of the kitchen. No. Get away from the stove. Don't no. hurt yourself. Uh -huh. Don't hurt yourself, that's right. Um, and some older kids are still hurting themselves. <laughs> that's okay, it's a totally, that's a totally different talk show. Uh, <laughs> now, your dad might not love football, but during the holiday season, you get some good games. And I'm That's about right. great football, but I'm also about munching throughout the day. And you've got a special uh, holiday munch treat for us while 
that turkey's going on, you're making something so we can all sit back and kind of enjoy the game. Tell us what you're whipping up here in this bowl. So um, today we are making some kale chips. Uh -huh. Now you stripped it. Many <laughs> people, many people like despise kale. They they think of it as one of the worst vegetables. Right. But with this new technique of cooking them, you know, they turn into a good snack. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And a healthy snack. And a cool snack. And a cool snack. So what do you do after you strip this, break the kale up to make so it such we, a healthy, cool so snack? So what we did was we washed the kale and we made sure to make sure they were completely dry. Mm -hmm. Then we took the kale and we just stripped it from the stem. Okay. Just pulled it off. Uh -huh. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding some this olive oil. This makes me so proud. I know it does. <laughs> it makes me so proud. <laughs> And this just olive oil just sprinkle all over. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Okay. And then just a lot or a little. Do you put a lot or a little? Because this is Austin's recipe. I don't yeah, know so it. So how much? I mean, and we want to remind everyone we will have the menu, we'll have the recipe, everything online, so you can try this at home. You put just enough to cover okay. most of the spots on every leaf. Okay. That's simple enough. I might even be able to do that, Austin. What do you think? Yes, sir. Okay. Everybody can do it. That's so encouraging. Everybody can cook. Everybody it's can so cook. <laughs> <laughs> He'll even come by and do it for I mean, show you how. Uh, show you how. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. And then you just toss it around. Best to do it with just your hands. It Get on in there. That's great. And then do we put special seasoning, or is it just the oil? So right mm -hmm. now, for now, we're just going to put some oil. OK. Do I move this over for you? Yes, ma'am. I did some cooking <laughs> with Austin. Thank so what we're going to do is going to break the larger pieces and nice okay. pieces. Now, when you are tearing these, you want to be mindful to make them pretty big, because in the oven, they will shrink quite a bit. OK. You know, one of the things I discovered about, about kale is that it is inherently salty. It is, yeah. Now, see, I like kale. I'm one of the I love like kale. I said, so, kale, but I like anything salad oriented. That's why we're not actually going to salt it beforehand. Okay. Before, gotcha. Okay, got it. Now you could do some. You can put garlic powder, onion powder on it. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Is that part of your? But is that part of your recipe? Also, is that what uh, you're uh, doing? Uh, it's recipe. I'm following your recipe. I'm not doing your recipe. Yes, ma'am. Austin, you know what this. It, it really makes perfect sense because you know now that kale is all the rage. Yep. Kale chips in the store can be a little pricey. Mm. When you can make it at home for forty nine cents. For forty nine cents a bunch, and, right? And, yeah. And it's a lot more fun. It's a good. Exactly. It's a good opportunity for you know the kids to get up in the kitchen. For the and kids. Nice family activity. The well, let me tell you a story about Austin. Uh, cooking for the kids. Yeah. I was going to ask, do you cook for your friends? I do, I do. Okay, great. Go ahead. Well, you know, he, he went over to, and actually, I, sh I should let Austin tell Austin the story. Austin, tell us then. Okay, so I went over to my friend's house for a sleepover one night. Right. Uh, very fun. Mo one of the most fun sleepovers I've ever been to. But in the morning, we mm -hmm. woke up all, we were all hungry. We stayed up super late that night. Right. Didn't right. really snack that much because we didn't have these amazing kale chips. Right. <laughs> but, um, and the father came, and he started to make some pancakes. Asked if he wanted some pancakes. Uh -huh. He pulled out this box of, I don't even know what it was, because I wasn't really used to that. I'm used to the amaranth quinoa pancakes and waffles that my dad used to make for me. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> right. From scratch. From scratch. Every so, time. Yep. So um, he started to make those. He just pulled out some milk and eggs and just put it in there. He walked away, and um, uh -huh. I, I, got, I got in the kitchen, started asking my friends where some of the things are. Uh -huh. The vanilla, you know, yes, the yes. spatulas, the whisks. I started yes. whisking it up, making it my own. Yes. Um, this makes me so proud. Proud, I know. <laughs> Go ahead, son, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I pulled out a pan, and I just started cooking. And, and you did that thing. I did. Mm -hmm. And when I pulled them off and I served them, they were the most beautiful pancakes ever. They seemed nice and golden brown. And, and delicious. And what did Dad say? Did, you, he, did he know? He, he was pretty much speechless. He's he was like, <laughs> I love it. Because he, he had to take part in the enjoying of the pancakes, too. Absolutely. So <laughs> now, I kill chips. Uh, go ahead. So now I get this message when I go to pick Austin <laughs> up. They're like, you know, I don't know if we can have your son over anymore because <laughs> we don't know how to make breakfast. Those of us. <laughs> <laughs> Zero about whipping out some vanilla and all of these other things. You know? Oh, Lord. You, you've got your kale chips. You broke them up. You mm -hmm. pretty much saturated mm -hmm. to taste kind of, I was saying, the oil. All right. You laid them out on the sheet. But you had something on this sheet. What's on this sheet? What I did is I put some 
a spray oil. Now I just put a piece of parchment just so it can oh, stick. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so it doesn't stick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Child, I would have just put and it And it's on. easy to clean up, too. It's it's very easy. Really. Now, do we sprinkle anything on it before we put it in the oven? Nothing. You don't do it? Okay. Oh, I'm, 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 I know. Juan, uh, uh, when uh, you right. may come back and make kale chips, you can sprinkle everything you want. <laughs> I, I got Austin's this. kale chips. I got this. <laughs> okay, see, he's got this. How long do we put it in the oven? About five minutes, but it's about how crispy you want them. Right. You can just... What temp? I, at one, uh, 350 degrees. Okay, and then with the magic of television. Voila! We have some, <laughs> yes. Now tell us, you've sprinkled something on here. I just put a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese. Nice. Just brings it all together. See how he holds it real high so it's because even. Because I asked your dad about that. Because <laughs> I was so if you hold it high, uh, it'll spread around. It's true, so that's true. And I love this because it's so light. You can mm -hmm. just hear mm -hmm. that crunch. Mm. And you're right, it's already salted. You don't mm -hmm. need a whole lot of extra stuff. Wow, those are good. They're very good. Also, as you see, I could do this, watch Thanksgiving this is... Day, um, I mean, excuse me, Christmas uh, Day game and New Year's Day and all the bowl games, and I'm happy and have Juan in there doing the turkey and everything. <laughs> now, afterwards, if you want, you can sprinkle some seasoned salt over them just mm -hmm. to top it off. Oh, delicious. Quick and simple. What is another specialty that you do? Because oh. I think we're going to have some. I know it's good. I think we're going to have some later. Do you do something magic with rolls and cranberry oh, sauce? Oh, here we go. Okay. So, <laughs> so we have a recipe that's been passed on from mm -hmm. multiple generations, starting with my dad's aunt Prudence. Mm -hmm. She made this um, technique of making rolls, and we call them potato rolls. It's because okay. they are made with actual potatoes. Mm -hmm. And we use potatoes because it just adds a flavor and, mm -hmm. and texture, mouthfeel, mm -hmm. that you can't get with anything else. Right, right. A mouthfeel. So now, I know, I love it. <laughs> so now you've mastered that. I have, my dad passed it on to me after uh, uh, his own prudence that's passed that's it down good. to him. Yeah, excellent. And but that's Austin started about. off as the glaze master. <laughs> he would make the glaze of? You would use cream okay. and just a little bit of confectioner sugar. Mix it up. And, and there you have just, it. Let, let, let me just ask, are you seeing more, are you seeing healthier food in school? You know, when you think about 13 year old <laughs> and whatnot, do they have kale chips, fresh kale chips in the school? Because I know there's been a big push nationwide, of course, for young folks to eat well. <laughs> Well, now, from where I sit, I think you need whatever you want to cook. But this is very tasty, and I, I would think this would be a hit with your friends. Most of my Are friends. Are you seeing that more in your schools or in different schools? Not necessarily in schools. A few mm -hmm. of my friends, whenever I go to their house, they do have, you know, small bag of kale chips. But they're, uh, I've tried them. They're just. They're just so processed. They're just so processed. They're <laughs> nothing like these. Amazing but, homemade I mean, ones. Right. We, we live in the city of Decatur, and it, mm -hmm. they're very into organic and. Austin's school actually has farm-to-table cafeteria. <laughs> so all of this is just, he can't get away from it, and it's a good thing, but that's a good thing, right, Austin? Sure. Okay, I know you do some mean rolls, and I know you do some mean cranberry sauce, because I hate to break this to you, uh, we've been already eating. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go over While to you were cooking. Without you, I know, Austin, forgive us, we're, such, we're so tacky. But we at least we admit it and tell the truth. So what we're gonna do is, I think this is a special glaze you have. Let's go to the table and we can finish our dinner. And you can tell us about the rolls and also the great cranberry sauce. So what I've made So is let, let me get over here because you know what, Austin, while you do that, Dad and I are gonna sit, I'm gonna refresh our beverages. Thank you. you. And you go to do what you do. So what okay. I've made is a small little bowl of glaze. Mm-hmm. Now, now what's in the glaze, please? A little bit of confectioner sugar and some cream. And, and a pinch it. of salt, usually. We put a pinch of salt in it, too. Because for those people who don't know, Salt just brings out the sweetness just a little bit. And really? I didn't know that. Salt is the world's best flavor enhancer. I even put salt so in I, coffee. Do you really? A pinch of salt in coffee takes it so far over the well, top. Well, you know, I like my coffee nice and strong and dry. I like it bitter, so maybe mm -hmm. that's... Uh, salt is Try it. it. I don't even... I will. I, Try it. Chef, I shall. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm going to have you sit okay. right here. And, and, and would you like me to carve you a piece of turkey, son? Yes, please. Once again, we... Chef Juan did a fabulous turkey. We've got the recipe for you, and of course you watch part one. Um, wonderful dressing here, great gravy. Now, and oh, and wonderful Brussels sprouts, and also we learned that most of the time families are overcooking vegetables, something yeah. horrible. You do not. 
Um, and also, this is great gravy. Juan, I meant to ask you, what is in the gravy? It's got a nice little kick to it. Well, you know, we uh, we make a um, a gravy from the giblets and the drippings from the from the turkey, like everybody does. Right. But I put fresh garlic in it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it really. Fresh thyme, fresh sage, fresh herbs really make it come alive. Anything very fresh makes sense. Now, Angela, do you mind if I serve you one of these rolls no, while they're still do. warm? And you can just Let me do test it. You can just do it right here <clears throat> while it's still warm. Hold on. You're going to need another one. Okay, wait a minute. I can only, uh, I can only sacrifice one hip at a time. <laughs> but if oh they don't my match. Lord, yes. Oh, this is oh and there is some butter on this table. Got, try, try some See, of that. You put... Oh, this is real, Austin. This is everything. Thank you. You can feel the difference in my family. Listen, wait a minute, this was almost like a dessert. Mm hmm We fight over this. This oh is my Lord. this is magnificent. Five thousand calories, isn't it? Mm hmm It's all. It's made with eggs. Okay, and wait a minute. Hold up, you guys. I gotta ask you this. Keep eating. And sugar You know, and sometimes butter. people are so overwhelmed, but I gotta tell you, what you've made is wonderful. Is uh, is gourmet. It's exquisite, but it doesn't seem too daunting. Mm -mm. Everyone could possibly. Mm -mm. It this just is, takes a little time. You're in a different kind of rhythm, right? This is accessible food. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's food that, um, of course, is delicious. It's very simple. Again, if you just add a little science and a little technique, mm -hmm. a lot of you love. can make it all happen. These and love. Don't forget the love part. Mm. Okay, I need to ask this secret, Austin. This cranberry sauce is working for me, my brother. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, and I know I'm going to probably cause your father to have a fit. <laughs> we got the cranberry sauce in the can, and it had the rings. And they were just fine. I don't know, you're saying, my goodness, help you, child. And you've never had that, have you? I have not. What, do you, what, are you putting, what do you put in this cranberry sauce? Does that taste a little bit of orange? Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. we, we don't just put normal cranberries and just load it up with sugar. Right. We add a few more things just mm -hmm. to enhance the flavor. Oh, God, it's good. <laughs> Clove. A little bit of clove, mm -hmm. some lemon, and some orange, an orange zest. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, that orange is strong. Mm -hmm. And every spice is really, uh, I don't know, I'm awful. Little, <laughs> but you can't eat I just couldn't let you go through the whole show. <laughs> it's so very tasty, but it's not too sweet, nothing's overpowered, and you can taste each flavor. Mm -hmm. You guys, do you ever just say, we're just gonna order pizza? I mean, is, is it always? And it's a, the it's a wonderful treat. We, we well, every eat. now and then, we uh -huh. have to break down and. You know, just take Normal like us, and mm -hmm. just like get takeout mm -hmm. or something and just have a pizza. We we'll go to the local Chinese place as a family and have, have fun. That's our night out for dinner. Right, otherwise you are pretty much throwing down every night. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. did you know that this is good cold? Mm. Yes, it's very good cold. But it makes a lovely hot toddy. You can heat it up and put why, it. I was wondering why, and I well, know you always <laughs> set a beautiful table. <laughs> but you're also encouraging you people to. For a second. Yes. This is amazing. It is. Thank you, it? son. <laughs> so we so we can say dad did all right. Oh, would you like some gravy, son? <laughs> yes, please. While Austin is tasting and um, we're still enjoying this, Austin, I want to share something else and I want to hear from both of you all about it from this beautiful essay. Once again, it was Lights, Camera, Cooking, A Father-Son Journey. The writing is exquisite, Austin. Thank you. The message is beautiful and I'm just going to let you know I... I had a real good cry of joy and happiness because to see this bond just, it filled my heart. And these are the kinds of things we want to you enjoy, especially during the holiday and the gathering time. You say, quote, my dad and I still have a very strong relationship as we continue to cook together. Mm -hmm. The bond that we built through his taking time to invest in me, hear me, invest in me, teach me, and share with me will continue to impact my life. I plan to use these lessons to one day develop as strong a relationship with my child. Yes, ma'am. That that's it. Yeah. I get awful clumped even I when know, I read it. I <laughs> because I think this is what uh -huh. this is all really about. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You you know, to be very honest, sometimes in our community, fathers, sons don't do this. Mm -hmm don't have it, whether it's cooking, whether it's wood making, whether mm -hmm. it's golfing, mm -hmm. this is absent. Mm -hmm. Juan, before we all cry, River. I'm sorry, I'm it's still okay. there. Okay, I'm okay. with you there, my brother, I'm with you there, my brother. <laughs> well, Austin, we're gonna collect ourselves. Austin, really talk about what this kind of relationship means, because I think it's, very, it's deeper than just a great Brussels sprout, yes, or to know is. how to make a roll. Mm -hmm. Every day we would um, go in the kitchen, 
Mm. It's just a place where we could communicate with each other, really, and just have fun, help each other. Download. Download. Mm -hmm. I am learning not to ask, how was school? Mm -hmm. I just listen. Mm. Then saying mm -hmm. and telling. Do you know what I mean when I say a lot of, you're very fortunate, but a lot of kids your age don't have that, whatever the bond is in the relationship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think this is your destiny when it's all said and done? Well, that, you know, I know we got to finish school. I'm not trying to rush it, bro. Because <laughs> you will finish school. <laughs> you can bank on, we're clear now. With a, degree, with a degree in engineering and, and computer science. Okay, you hear all this? And, and brain surgery. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, it, it, I guess what I'm asking, it never really leaves you, will it? Not if you're starting to. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the things you think you might want to do as you infuse this, this talent well, and the gift from your dad? Well, I will always keep cooking because it's just something that you need to live. Mm -hmm. And um, But I might, when it comes to college, I might um, go into some engineering fields. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're so crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, I don't play poker really well. <laughs> what are some of your favorite things to cook? Oh, I've been mm -hmm. told that I make a pretty mean broth and uh -huh. just add some... Oh, Lord, this is so good, this cranberry sauce. I'm listening, baby. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> add some vegetables, a little bit of seasoning, some, mm -hmm. you know, some meats, mm -hmm. chicken. Mm -hmm. What haven't you mastered that you know Dad really has the, the hook on it and that you really want well, to make sure you master? Well, there are countless things that I can always improve mm -hmm. on. I can actually improve on everything. Mm -hmm. Just a few is, um, you know, just... I mean, it's pretty hard for most people to cook, mm -hmm. you know, just a nice steak. Right. Oh, or, God. And then there are these... You can foods. have a car. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are these foods that most people don't really even know of. Uh -huh. um, one of like? my favorites uh -huh. that we have all the time is egg foo young. That you make? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, forgive me. I'm, I don't, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Now, when did you pick... Did you teach him that? Yeah. Did you pick, Oh yeah. Okay. So what goes? Oh, that's deep. <laughs> right. That's great. I mean, I know someone makes it. I just go to the restaurant <laughs> and have it. I mean, I know it's. it's As a it's, matter of fact, I don't even think we get uh -huh. egg for young when we go to the agent. No, because you're making. Oh, I, I know what I want to also. Do. That makes me think. How critical are both of you all when you go out? Ooh, to eat. Ooh. Well, <laughs> that's a tough question. Uh, no, it's gonna tell us. You can tell us. <laughs> My barometer for a good restaurant mm -hmm. is that it has to have. Uh, exquisite food, mm -hmm. amazing interiors, and uh, uh, over-the-top service. That's all. Mm. So my favorite restaurant is actually Burger King. <laughs> After all we've been to, your favorite restaurant is Burger King. But when you say amazing food? Amazing food. Okay, but this is amazing food. But who, you just know in your palate when it's a, amazing and really, mm -hmm. really all the time. Are you very critical when you go in? Or how critical are you, I should say? I'm not yeah, very yeah. critical, actually. I, I'm pretty open to almost any foods. Mm -hmm. There are the few little foods that I just can't handle. But for the most part, you know, I'm pretty open. What new techniques do you use? I mean, you toss the kale chips like a, a well, you are a pro, like a pro. <laughs> any other special techniques or anything? Well, there's just simple mixing. You got to whisk it up, get the uh -huh. flick of the wrist. Right. Um, and then, I mean, chopping, cutting things. Uh -huh. with He's got really good knife skills. Does he? Knife okay. skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. You know, most of the time when we're at a table like this, leading up to this table, and let me just say once again, thank God for that. Put it right here. <laughs> put it right here. Just thank God for all of this. This is really very, very good. And as you know, Juan, I'm very particular. I might not be able to cook it, <laughs> but I know when it's good food. So what is your barometer for a good restaurant? But, well, first of all, I, I really need a re recommendation from a great cook mm. to try this, to go to this restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then I usually say, okay, if you want me to go there, what's a great dish? Mm -hmm. And I listen to the wait staff because I, and I love a wait staff that says, oh, you really want that fish? And I'm like, no, clearly I don't. I really will go with the chicken dish or they'll recommend. And you want great service. Because I think when you have a beautiful table and when you have great service, I can kind of push past something that might not, they maybe don't do the sweet potatoes like I know you do a sweet potato. But it's, it's still okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I want a really good recommendation mm -hmm. um, to move forward. Before we 
close up shortly. I just want both of you all to speak to as we look at our culture and this holiday season and the tradition and the talent that you have in our African American culture, how significant it is when we are gathered with food. Um, I can remember growing up and always being in my grandmother's kitchen. She could cook, she could throw down. I got none of that um, from her, but I had a great appreciation for the time and what it takes to feed so many. Mm -hmm. Little did we know the very little that we might have. But we always make it work around food, Juan. Speak to that. Well, you know, um, to me, the sharing of my food is uh, it's part of my love language. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when I make uh, Judith a fabulous meal, that's me saying to her, this is, this is, I love you this way. Mm -hmm. That's why I really cut to the core when my oldest son, Monty, Austin's oldest brother, uh -huh. decided to be a vegetarian mm -hmm. and wanted to cook for himself. Mm -hmm. it, it was a while after that that I realized that w why I was so you know, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. touched. <laughs> for touched. It's like for touched. favorite word. For touched. So what about you, Austin? What do you yeah. think? I mean, these days, like, a lot of kids are up in their room, locked in their room, gaming. Yes. And, like, I feel like this time at the table with everybody is where you can really socialize and get to feel mm. how everybody's doing, know how they're doing. Right. Get to catch up. And, and, really, and really connect. Everybody says table. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, I, I tried to eat at the table, right. but I learned my mother said, relax, just as long as y'all together, it, it doesn't mean Say where that. it is. Say that, yes. Front porch, yes. living room, dining room, right. just you're as long right. as you're together. It's so. about the gathering together. You are just beyond splendid. Thank I you. love this. I do you know, I love me some Austin. <laughs> and, I, and I so appreciate you being with us. Before we go, I want to let everybody know, yes, we will have the menus on the website. Yes, we will have all the recipes on the website. But to really know more about what happens before it gets to this table, this is an architect and interior designer, ShayMontier.com. It's where you can go and find out so much about what he is doing. And I'm going to raise a glass. Will you raise what you have left? You can raise your fork, because you will not have any. <laughs> we still got, we're still real. And just want to say, as always, I thank you all for joining thank us. Thank you for having us. Have a blessed holiday season. As you always, as well. We thank you for joining us. We're in contact with you. You be in contact with us. Thank you for being in contact with us. Have a safe and blessed holiday, all of everybody's holiday, and we know it will be a blessed and prosperous new year. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. And thank you, my fine thank son. You. Mm -hmm. My fine, fine son. You are the best. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This right here is the is, best. It's the best, right? <laughs> it is everything. It is everything. So let's keep digging in. Okay. Can you pass me some Brussels sprouts? This show is sponsored in part by The Southern Company. For more information on how to get a copy of the show, please send your request to aabjorg at gmail.com.